Payoff and profit diagrams can be helpful in the study of derivatives. So here I'd just like to introduce the payoff and profit diagrams for futures and option contracts and just discuss the specific terminology that's used in John Hall. Our simplest payoff diagrams are for forward and futures contracts. So that's illustrated here on the left. This is a payoff diagram for a long position in a future or forward contract with a delivery price equal to $20. That's K equal to 20. So the delivery price, in the case of the long forward contract, the buyer is promising to purchase that commodity in the future, but at this predetermined price of $20. In the case of the short, it's a promise to sell the commodity in the future, but sell it at the predetermined delivery price of $20. So the payoff diagrams for forward and futures are very simple. They're symmetrical and they are given in the case of the long, it's just going to be the future uh, commodity price minus the delivery price. And so it assumes sort of a cash settlement. Um, that would be the case for most futures contracts. But even if there weren't a cash settlement, if the long forward goes ahead, uh, is obligated to go ahead and buy the commodity in the future, they could, after all, it has a, it has a future value of S sub T, so they could sell it for that. So this is going to be their economic gain, regardless of physical or cash settlement. In the case of the short forward, it's just delivery price minus the future um, commodity price. And so we have the short, a long forward and short forward, and we would call these payoff diagrams. And we could also call them profit diagrams because uh, profit equals payoff in the case of the uh, forward and futures contracts, because there is no initial cost here, unlike with options. So we can, if we set aside collateral requirements and other uh, frictions, there is no initial cost to enter the long or the short position. It's an initial cost of zero. So profit equals payoff. And these are very simple. Now, then I'll show you the uh, option diagrams. And here we have for a call on the left and a put on the right. So these are very fundamental and I'm kicking off the series on whole. So we tend to use these diagrams when it gets more complicated uh, with trading strategies, option trading strategies, and also with the exotic options. But these are the simple fundamental building blocks. Here is a long call. So that's buying or purchasing a call option. And here is a long put. So this is buying or purchasing a put option. And you'll notice, unlike with the forward futures payoff diagram, here there is a distinction between payoff and profit. So if I take the long call, which recall that that futures, I'm doing introduction here, so that futures was a promise to purchase the commodity in the future at a predetermined price. The call option is the right, but not the obligation, to purchase the asset or commodity for this predetermined strike price. In the future forward contract, it was a delivery price. Here it is a strike or exercise price denoted by K or very often also by X. So if we look at the payoff diagram, then the payoff is a future oriented concept. That's what I wanted to convey. It's just the future cash flow. And you can see here for purchasing the call that it's bounded at zero because for the call option, it being the right but not the obligation, its future payoff is going to be the maximum of the future asset or stock price minus the delivery price. So that's going to be the future intrinsic value, but we're only going to exercise that as the buyer if there's a gain. So it's a maximum function. We're not going to exercise it if it's a loss after all. So that's the payoff as represented by the orange. And so that's a familiar pattern. If you work, we work with these long enough, you'll just start to recognize that as a, a long call or something that's synthesizing a long call. And it's bounded here in the zero. Our payoff must be a minimum of zero. However, there is also the profit concept and that's in green. And that's because unlike with the futures forward, there is an initial cost, of course, to purchase a call or a put. So the profit is the payoff minus the cost. 
So it's payoff minus the cost. We're going to denote that with a small c. That indicates a European call option. So here we have payoff in orange, but we're subtracting the initial cost of the option, and that gives us the profit. And you might have noticed that we abstract or sort of ignore the time value of money because the initial cost is up front, but the payoff comes later. So uh, it, uh, finance geeks might want to adjust that for time value money, but in terms of the profit diagram, we generally don't do that. And we can look at this also and just visually infer here that the cost of this uh, call option must be about $2. So that's the option premium. So that means that there is going to be a net loss in any um, situation where in the future where the uh, asset price is less than $20. But at, above that, there's going to be a gain. And there's going to be a break even here that's going to be at twenty. the exercise price plus the cost of $2 or this break even is going to be at 22 So for the long put, um, I, oh, I've got my cursor there still. I'll, I'll just draw around it. For my long put, the payoff is the maximum of the strike minus the future spot price. But uh, again, being the right but not the obligation, if there's no intrinsic value, the buyer or holder of this put won't exercise, doesn't need to exercise. So it's bounded by zero. So you can see here, that's why this payoff is bounded at zero. And that's the payoff. Oops, sorry. And uh, interesting fact here, the long call has theoretically unlimited payoff. You can see because this stock price could go as high. There's really no theoretical upside limit. We say it's uncapped on the upside. Not the case with the put though, right? Because the stock price, although I don't show it here, won't drop below zero. So the gain on the long put is actually capped, unlike with the call, which is theoretically uncapped. Okay, but that's the payoff, we subtract the cost, the initial cost, aka the premium of the option, here denoted small p to indicate a European put, and that will give us the profit diagram in green for the long put. And that long put gives us a net loss in any situation where the stock price is, is greater than our, the, where the future stock price is greater than our exercise price, but we are gonna get a gain for anything less than that. After all, that is the what the put is designed to do, and is uh, so it's ideal for insurance. But again, it's gonna be cap, our gain is gonna be theoretically capped as there is a lower limit on that future stock price. Okay, so then I will show you also, um, just flipping it out from the perspective of the counterparty. If we think about it, the buyer of the call or the put has a counterparty who is selling. So here is the counterparty's perspective. Here is the short call who would be the counterparty to the long call. They are selling or writing the call option. We usually say writing the call option. And um, here is that diagram. It's sort of, a, it's actually a mirror image of the uh, long call position. And you can see it has a payoff here. And that payoff here does not go above zero. So this short call really, uh, the writer of the option really uh, incurs some exposure, but that's in exchange for collecting the premium. So their profit diagram, which includes the premium, in this case, whereas the buyer of the call or put paid the premium, the seller of the call, um, they're really, uh, it's more of an income trade, so they're collecting the premium, and so that profit includes the uh, premium. So if I just put that notationally for the short call, um, they're just their profit, well, they are going to collect the premium, small c, collect, that's the income up front, but they are exposed to this contingent liability really of making a payoff, maybe making a payoff, uh, which is gonna be the mirror image to the long call position. So that's gonna be max at future S sub T minus the strike or zero. So this short call is hoping 
that the future stock price is low so that there is no payoff and their profit is just that segment up here uh, of the profit line. But as the stock price increases, there will be, they will have to make the uh, payoff and then their profit's going to drop. And so similarly, their break even is going to be at 22 as well. For the short put, if we look at their uh, profit diagram and we can immediately see that the premium is smaller. It's not, uh, it's closer to a dollar than two dollars in this case under my assumptions. For the short put, their profit is going to be the initial premium that they, they collect, but subtracting the payoff, that contingent payoff that they may need to make if the strike price, if the, uh, if the future stock price is less than the strike price. And, but they're hoping, um, this short put is hoping that the future stock price is greater than the exercise price and there won't be a payoff and the profit will just be the upfront premium that they collect. But so my key point there was to distinguish between the payoff, which is the future cash flows and the profit, which includes in this case, the income from writing the options. Okay, then. Finally, just uh, two more or three more slides to show. Uh, just a, an example of using these, um, we can combine them. So here I have the same long call, same long put, and <clears throat> a long straddle would be a purchase of this call and this put. And you can see how um, visually it's very easy. We take the in orange, the long call, in purple is the long put. So if you have purchased each of these together, this is your net profit of that strategy, and it's called a long straddle, would be given by the green as the summation of the two profits. So that's a long straddle where if the stock ends up where at the exercise price, you're going to lose because there's going to be no payoffs on the options, and you're 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 only you're you're just going to have a loss due to the fact that you paid the premiums. Uh, on the other hand, you will have a profit if the st stock price moves in a in a big direction, in a big way, either direction, left or right, down or up. And also another use of these diagrams is just uh, illustrated. This is in Hull illustrated to illustrate the value of a stock position with or without hedging. So in this case. It's just under the assumption that we have a thousand shares and we uh, purchase uh, put options as insurance. If we just own the shares, that would be illustrated in blue, that's with no hedge. And that is the value of our stock position that is a linear function of whether the stock moves up or down. However, we could hedge by purchasing put options. And so I'm using the same example as I used before. Um, let's say, it, the strike price is twenty dollars, and the put option is premium. The cost of the options is hundred is one dollar and twenty cents. Then we could purchase options on a thousand shares. That's our underlying position for a total cost of one thousand two hundred dollars, approximately. And then we our our new position is the underlying shares. That's our exposure that are hedged by the purchase of these um, one thousand put options. And so the net position is hedged and shown in green. And what this shows us is that on the upside with higher stock stock prices, um, we're not as we're not as well off. Um, specifically, we're we're giving up the twelve hundred dollars on the upside. However, if the stock price drops below our exercise price, we're going to gain on the put options that we purchase for insurance, and they're gonna perfectly offset declines in the underlying exposure. So we have a horizontal line here that really just visually illustrates um, the power of our hedge. It did cost us a premium, but we have capped, we've really limited here um, the loss in terms of our net position. And then uh, finally, here's the diagram also similar to what's in Hull, that just illustrates the leverage that is inherent in uh, call options or put op any options, or in fact, derivatives in general. And it's comparing here, the, the assumption is that we have $2,000 to invest. 
and the blue line shows the profit of just investing that $2,000 in 100 shares of stock where each share has a price of $20. So that position here is pretty uh, mundane in the sense that it goes up or down in linear fashion with the stock price. And that's just compared to, recall we had $2,000. Instead of putting it into shares at $20 a piece, let's say we can purchase call options with a strike of $20 and the premium is $2. Well, if the option premium is $2, then we can purchase 1,000 call options. We spend the same $2,000, but instead of 100 shares, we can purchase 1,000 call options. The profit diagram for that position, which spends the same amount of money, is indicated here in the green, which is the same pattern as that call option profit diagram. And so this just illustrates the leverage. We have 10 times the number of instruments, a thousand options as opposed to hundred shares. So we're much more leveraged on the upside. However, the, the price we pay for that is on the downside. If we don't get to exercise the call options, notice the loss here is the entire 2000. That's the um, total premium that we paid. And so this illustrates the how the, the, the dramatic difference in leverage between options as derivatives and just purchasing the underlying naked shares. So I hope that's a helpful review of the payoff and profit diagrams that we will uh, look at later in Hull.